Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this video we're going to continue working on Drenches of War by setting up a system to shoot water balloons out of our screen. This is going to be real quick, it's not going to take too long, so let's hop right in and do it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder down here. So I'm going to say create folder, and I'm just going to name this scripts. And it's just going to be there for general scripts that don't really have much of a place anywhere else. And then I'm going to make a subfolder of that. And I'm going to say screen cannon. That's what we'll call it. And then we create a script. So create C sharp script screen cannon. Perfect. Let's go into the script. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up a couple of variables. So first we've got a serialized field. And this is going to be a, pri a private game object called projectile. And then we want another serialized field called private int max ammo. And we're going to set that to three by default because that's how much we're planning on having. And we say serialized field private float replenish time. And we're going to set that to five seconds or 5.0 F. And then one more serialized field, and that's going to be private float shot force. And we're going to set that by default to 750.0 F because we're going to want a pretty strong shot going forward. Now, these are pretty self explanatory, but we've got our projectile, which is going to be what our screen cannon is shooting out of it. The max ammo, which is the maximum amount of ammunition that our screen cannon can have. Replenish time, which is how fast that ammo replenishes. And the shot force, which is how much force is being put behind our shot out of the cannon. Next, we just need a private int current ammo. And we're going to start off with zero. And then one more private variable. And this is going to be of type screen cannon. And we're going to call it instance because we want to turn this into a singleton, which is just a fancy way of saying we only want one in the game at any time. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we use singletons. Next, we need just a few getters. So we're going to get max ammo. And I'm just going to turn this into a single line statement. And then we want to go ahead and get be able to get our current ammo. And we also want to be able to access our instance in case any other classes need something. There we go. Now to finish setting up our singleton, we are going to need the awake function. And first, we're going to make an assertion of is not null on the projectile because we want to make sure that we've got something we're throwing. Next, we're going to do a check to see if the instance variable is null, and if it is, then set that variable to this game object. Otherwise, throw away whatever's trying to become the screen cannon. So we're just going to say if instance equals null, then instance equals this. Else if instance does not equal this, then destroy whatever that game object is. And then we want to just tell it, don't destroy on load this game object to make sure that we've always got access to it and that the data inside of it doesn't change. And then we're going to want to go down to our update function. Now, for this class to really work, we're going to need two functions. So let's go ahead and add those first. First, we want our class to be able to replenish its own ammo over time. And the way that we'll achieve that is by setting up a private I enumerator replenish ammo and we're just going to say while true go ahead and set the current ammo to the math f dot min of current ammo plus one and max ammo that's just going to make sure that we never go over our maximum ammunition level and it's going to increment it if we're not up there then we're just going to say yield return new wait four seconds, replenish time. 
The last function we'll need is a function to actually produce a shot and send it off. So let's say private void fire shot. And before we shoot, we want to do a couple of checks. So we're going to say if current ammo is greater than zero. And we want to make sure that we're not tapping on any UI elements when we go to shoot. In case we add something like a pause button or anything like that, we want to make sure that it is intentional. So let's go ahead and say not event system dot current dot is pointer over game object. And that'll make sure that we're not tapping on a UI element. And then we're going to create a new instance of the game object. So game object new projectile equals instantiate an instance of projectile with the current transform dot position and transform dot rotation. And then we're going to grab the rigid body off of that projectile. So we're going to say rigid body dodge body equals new projectile dot get component rigid body. And now that we've got access to that, we want to add some force to it. So we're going to say proj body dot add force. And we're going to grab the transforms forward position and then multiply it by the shot force. And we're just going to say current ammo minus minus. And so grabbing the transforms forward instead of the default vector three forward is going to make it so that our projectile shoots forward no matter where this object that we are assigning the script to is facing. And now we're most of the way there. To make sure that our code routine actually runs, we're going to go ahead up to the start function. And we're just going to say start code routine replenish ammo. That way, right off the bat, we're replenishing ammo and shooting it out. That way, right from the start, when this is instantiated, we are replenishing our ammo for our user. And then on update, we want to check and see if there's an input. So we're going to say input dot get mouse button down zero fire shot. And really, that's that's all there is to it. Perfect. So let's save this script. And then we're going to switch back over to Unity. And now we're just going to go ahead and take this script, the screen cannon script, and apply it to an object. Well, where do we want this? That's a great question. We are going to want this assigned to the camera inside of the AR root. The reason being that camera is going to be essentially where our phone is in the world space. And as it moves around, we want to make sure that we're shooting straight from the center of the device where the user is seeing it. And the perfect place to do that is in this main camera. So I'm just going to click on it and then drag over the screen cannon. And then there's one last issue that we haven't addressed yet, and that is this projectile. Where is that coming from? Well, in the assets provided with this section, I've created a prefab for the water ball. So let's go ahead and grab that real quick. Just head into the folder, and we're going to grab this whole water ball folder and drag it in and drop it here into our project. To help with organization a little bit, let's go and create a folder. And I'm going to call this game objects. And we'll just drag it into there. Perfect. From there, go down into the water ball folder and grab this prefab. And then click on the main camera so that we can see our script. And we're just going to drag the prefab over onto that. Perfect. Now we've got a water ball that's going to shoot out of the center of our screen. So let's press play and just make sure that this works. Which it doesn't because I am making a call to something that we haven't set up yet, but we will be in the next video. So let's go edit that script real quick. And I'm just going to take out this check. Comment it out for a second, save it. Let's go back to Unity. Press play. And now we've got our scene, right? OK, looks like I jumped the gun once again. So let's stop this. And we'll head back over to our script. And down here in the fire shot, 
this event system doesn't exist yet because we haven't set up our UI. So just for a bit, I'm going to comment this section out with an inline comment. And we'll save that, head back to Unity, and start that up. OK, and now we are shooting balls out of the screen. And I'm clicking away, but it's not allowing me to shoot until it's regenerated. Perfect. We are now one step closer to having this set up. And just so I don't forget, let's go ahead and uncomment that event system that we just had in our script, just so we don't have to come back to this script again. Let's save back to Unity. And I'm just going to update collab. And I'm going to say added screen cannon and water ball. Publish now and save our changes. And we're good to go. So great job following along. We are now one step closer to having our game set up. In this video, we covered creating a script that we're going to use to shoot the water ball that we need to take down enemy tanks out of our screen and how that's going to interact with our AR space. I'm excited to move along, so let's go. This has been with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.